no interest in Leonard Fournette. Yeah, there's not going to be Fournette on my team. I'll tell you, there's a few guys that aren't going to be on my team. Um, and it's definitely Le'Veon Bell, and it's definitely Leonard Fournette. Th- those are the two guys in the top probably 20 running backs that I'm. they're just not going to be on my team, period. It ain't happening. I think you get into a couple interesting guys here kind of right after Fournette on the ADP. And these are your guys that are slated in somewhere in, in, you know, the middle of the third round to the early fourth round. You got guys like Damian Williams, Marlon Mack, Derrick Henry, and Aaron Jones, along with, uh, you know, Devontae Freeman, who I, I can only imagine is that low because of a, a tremendous amount of injury history. I mean, he was going a lot higher last year. Um, Aaron Jones, you got a lot of questions on, you, you think, you think that they're going to use them more, but you looked at, uh, Tennessee's offenses last year and you're kind of perplexed as to why they're playing, who they're playing when they're playing. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, and then you don't have the same type of passing game involvement with Marlon Mack. So, you know, these guys obviously have questions as to why they come there, but I think you can go pretty well with any of these guys. I, I'm, I'm pretty interested in all of them and I've never really been, a Devontae Freeman guy. I've always skipped him, but he was, you know, typically going at the beginning of the third round, and I don't have interest for him there. Nah, yeah, I'm looking at his overall. Are you, are you looking at fantasypros.com's ADP? Because you're reading like right down the same list I'm looking at. Uh, no, I'm on four for four. Ah, nice. So, yeah, the one right under Marlon Mack was Derrick Henry. It's an interesting spot. Um, they, they, their offensive guy is in Green Bay now. Yes, All right. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. People are going to get high on him because how well he finished the year. And frankly, he won championships for people last year. But that's going to be a totally new offense. So he's probably on my caution list as well. Until, until I see what happens preseason, see how their uh, their new offense looks, I guess. I mean, if it's more run-heavy, shit, maybe, maybe he is a good target. Yeah, yeah well, and, and I mean, then you get into these, these really kind of – fringe guys and the round out the top 25 with uh like josh jacobs carry on johnson sony michelle philip Lindsay, uh mark ingram chris carson james white and and you know Kenyon drake Tarek ma cohen and uh david montgomery and and darius goose so i i don't know i i like a couple of those guys i i, I want to like carry on johnson uh, but i don't think he's going to get a lot of goal line carries I think the guys that are the most interesting in, in that little framework of guys is Sony Michelle, and um, I, I'm really interested in seeing how they use Mark Ingram. I think in Baltimore with the running attack, uh, I think that could be a really good spot for him, and it could be a, a great a great pickup at the end of the fourth, early fifth with a Mark Ingram. Yeah, I could agree with you on that. It's, it's going to see how it shakes out for them in, in the camp because they still have every running back. They still have Gus. They still have all those guys. So it'll be interesting to see who gets cut and, and where it ends up there. Um, you know, Another guy that I'm, I'm cautious about is Philip Lindsay. I think uh, with um, uh, Rice Freeman probably healthy and getting another go at the offense. I mean, the guy's just too talented to not – be a timeshare there. So I think that what's going to happen is Philip Lindsay is going to be a little overdrafted for my taste. So right now they're looking at him at the end of the th- third, beginning mm-hmm. of the fourth round. And I still and think the, it's a little high for me. Um, I have him as RB 22, which would put him at the, I have him the 42 beginning. overall. Yeah. 44, which would put him around uh, the end of the fourth, early fifth. Yeah. I, I, now, if he goes down to the fifth, that's all right. But the, his overall at 42 in a 12-man league, I mean, that's uh, middle of the fourth round. So it's a little little high to, until we see what happens in preseason. So does Kenyon Drake actually get a run uh, with the new coach in Miami? What do you what do you think? What do you think about Kenyon Drake? Yeah, I just like a, a couple of the other guys in that area. You know, your Tariq Cohen, David Montgomery, um, even Chris Carson to some extent. Uh, I, I, I'm just not kind of interested there. I will tell you that uh, Baltimore did get rid of Alex Collins. So saying that they have all of the guys, they don't have all of the guys. They do have some of those other guys that, that they plugged in there. But when you're talking about Gus Edwards and you're talking about Mark Ingram, I think you're talking about two drastically different talent levels. Oh, yeah. I think Mark yeah. is going to... 
take the bulk of those carries, and I, I wouldn't worry about the other guys on the roster um, in that regard. Well, the, the thing with it is, though, is that when you got a running quarterback like they have in Jackson there, I don't necessarily like the guys like Ingram, who um, is probably the best fit for that third down back for them. Uh, I like the Gus Edwards with their running quarterback more. So I, I want to like Mark Ingram a lot because their offensive line there is perhaps the best in the league. And uh, I like the focus on the running game. I'm just not sure that they're going to be willing to get rid of Gus's touches for Mark Ingram's. Well, why would you bring in Mark Ingram and pay him what you're paying him if you're just going to roll with Gus Edwards? I, I, I don't think I, they're going to roll uh, with Gus Edwards. I just don't I, think I, Mark Ingram is going to get your, my, the largest portion. I, I would be willing to place a wager on that, that uh, you know, provided they're both healthy. Uh, Mark Ingram outtouches him. Uh, you know, three oh, I one. agree. I'm not saying that, but I'm thinking it's going to be like a 60-40, not an 80-20. Oh, I think it'll be 80-20 for sure. We shall see. I don't. I don't know where your your Gus Edwards love is coming here, and, and um, I don't get it. I don't. You, you think that Mark Ingram is going to possess a third down roll and not in the first and second down? I don't uh, think that he doesn't get first and second down. I just think he fits more in in definitely as a third down guy. But I think you see Jackson running a little bit more. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what happens, man. I mean, they, they were a team that, I mean, granted, they didn't have anybody caliber of Mark Ingram, but they also never just gave one guy the ball. Well, and again, I think it was because of who they had back there. You know, Alex Collins was uh, uh, a disappointment to many, uh, not just to the Ravens, but to the many people that drafted him. Not not me. I didn't draft him. I didn't fall into that trap. Um but I think he went with a couple different running backs in that backfield because they had different talents. I, you know, Mark Ingram isn't known as a guy that, um, you know, catches the ball well, but he does. I mean, it's just, you know, when you're in the backfield with Kamara, your, your role is going to be a little bit different. Running backs tend to have better yards per carry when they do uh, operate with a uh, running quarterback. And so I, I like Mark Ingram. Um, you know, I'm hesitant because it is Mark Ingram. And any time that I've ever been high on Mark Ingram, um, he's disappointed me usually with an injury or something to that extent. But um, I like Mark Ingram. Um, I think he's ranked a little bit low with the RB23. I, I kind of like him, you know, more into the, uh, the Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry, and that kind of in that area. Yeah. Um, I could take Mark Ingram if I was really happy with running back one and two. So if I got a really nice running back one and two, got a pretty decent receiver, and he was there in round four, I could definitely get on board with that. Do you have any input on Mark Ingram, Adam? I'd be really curious to see what his role ends up. We lost you. Well, we lost him. He gone. Well, I mean, we know that he's going to be curious about Mark Ingram's role, so that's that's some input there. Yep. That's my – I'm not doubting his talent, and that offensive line is amazing. I'm just curious what they're going to do with him. And I think, I think Mark probably still has – I wouldn't call him bell cow quality um, – you know, work left in him, but he definitely has some workhorse work left in him. I'm just not sure he's going to get it all. It. He can do it. Yeah. No, they'll probably, it'll probably be more like 70, 30, but I think if Ingram's getting 15 to 18 touches between the running game and the passing game, he's probably worth where he's going at the ADP here. Sure. I can see that. I mean, just uh, to, to put it in perspective, I mean, last year he rushed for 4.7 yards uh, per carry. Uh, had 138 attempts, obviously didn't play for four games, uh, 21 receptions. And I, and I think that number goes up, um, you know, when I, I guess this is what I would say. You're curious to see what they do with them. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to look into my crystal ball and I'm going to tell you what they're going to do with them. They're going to hand him the ball. He's going to run for 4.6 yards per clip and uh, he's going to have a thousand yard rushing season while Gus Edwards rushes for maybe two, 300, uh, this is divided. And uh, just get off for PEDs. Do you, do you worry at all about Lamar being a running quarterback taken away from his carries? No, I, I think that it, it it makes it easier for him um, because that 
I don't think that they're going to want Lamar to run the ball as much as he did last year. I think he's going to have a lot more time with the offense. And so those designed runs are going to get kicked out to him. I, I just think it takes the, you know, when it's a running play, who's getting the ball? You know, I, I, I don't think that Gus Edwards won't be on the field in some of those situations or a different running back will be on the field. I just think the primary ball carrier, um, like you said, eight, I think 80, 20, 70, 30. I certainly don't think it's going to be a 60, 40 or, or a 50, 50. Um, it's going to go to, to Mark Ingram. And I think that you saw that rushing attack, even with Lamar Jackson last year, uh, do very well. Um, and then just got to keep in mind, it, it's, it's Gus Edwards. I mean, we love Gus the bus. Don't get me wrong, but it's Gus Edwards. Who's sure. that? I just think, you know, he's going to get those goal line touches again too. So I, it's, I just want to see how it plays out. I, I'm not, a, I don't, I'm with you, man. Like the, every time I've ever put, put a dime down on Mark Ingram, I've gotten him in his bad year. So I'm just very hesitant with that dude. Yeah. Maybe that's personal bias. Who knows? So um, anyway, let's keep going down for a little bit because this has been enjoyable. I, I'm digging it. So um, I think it falls off right there. I mean, like, I, I'm it, interested it, in this conversation between Montgomery and Cohen. You know, both um, in the backfield there. Um, Montgomery's. I don't know if he's really is, – is he a huge upgrade over Jordan Howard? Is Jordan Howard that bad, or is he just bad in that system? Is he going to be all right in Philly? So these are these are interesting questions. I think they're both viable guys. I think that, um, you know, Jordan Howard, Howard's departure makes both of them, you know, rosterable, and you could go with either of them. I think Cohen has yeah, – He's not an every down back. He's not a guy that could be a bell cow or a workload. He's just too small. So Montgomery's going to have those games and he's going to have that role. And I think Cohen is still fine. I think the, the problem that you run into is right after this, like if you don't have your second or third running back, um, it, it gets tough after Cohen, Montgomery, Darius, and then you get into some, some real questionable areas where you've got like Tevin Coleman, Right there in that area is a guy, Miles Sanders. Never heard of him. Who is Miles Sanders? You know anything about him? He, he's the projected top guy in Philly who's going to split carries with Jordan Howard. I've never heard of him. Must be a rookie. I I don't know anything about Miles Sanders, to be honest with you. Hmm. Well, they've got him up at 32 in front of Rashad Penny, Jordan Howard, Lat Murray, McCoy, Freeman, McKinnon. Um, yeah, I mean, the guy that I'm interested in right there would be like a Rashard Penny. You know, I think he's interesting, but I mean, all of these guys have such low floors that I can see all of these guys busting out. But I mean, you've got your Rashard Penny, um, Latavius Murray. These guys are like RB4s for me if I had a strong start or RB5s if I had to take a couple chances. Yeah, what I'm saying is that you want to make sure that you have at least two running backs before you get into to this area, preferably three, because these guys, you know, they're tough, man. Like, a, I can make a case for some of these guys, but I, I don't know. I mean, do I want to assume that Latavius Murray gets all of the Mark Ingram run and maybe Kamara gets hurt? Uh, you know, you got Jordan Howard, uh, Jarrett McKinnon. Austin Eckler, Carlos Hyde, Ronald Jones, Royce Freeman. I mean, the only guy in here that has the the significant talent would be Kareem Hunt. But I, I just I don't know how much how much run Kareem Hunt is going to get when you got a guy like Nick Chubb, who's just the alternate, uh, like ultimate efficient, you know, machine. Yeah, and uh, I haven't really been watching. I'm not in football mode yet. But has there been any talk? Uh, I know he he was going to meet with uh, Goodell. Um, but I haven't heard anything down on him. I mean, we're going to assume he's going to get at least six games suspended, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to be out for the first part of the year, I think. So um, it's just going to be hard to wrestle that that uh, that job away from, from Nick Chubb, who I'm very high on. Yeah, it's so. going to be interesting. So he, he's been sus- suspended for the first eight games. He'll probably get it reduced to six. That's usually how that goes. Um but, but yeah, man, I mean, you're going to have to take them in, like, the fifth round to get him because somebody's going to think they're smarter than everybody else and snag him, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not drafting him as my fourth, 
you know, uh, running back or, or my early fifth round pick. I mean, cause somebody's gonna, cause 